I'm Melissa Idris and this is The Future is Female, the show where we find the extraordinary in every woman. Now I'm here today at Yayasan Chalkit to speak to its founder, Dr. Hartini Zainuddin. Yayasan Chalkit is a 24-hour crisis centre that provides food, therapy, educational programmes for at-risk children here in Chalkit. Now I'm going to find out from Dr. Tini what keeps her going, making sure that there's no child left behind. for joining me today on the show. Thank you for I, having me. And we're here at Yaya Sanchake in yes. the toy library. Yes. Um, I'm curious to know how the centre started. This is a passion project of yours. Yes. And how long has it been since it's first started? We opened here on April the 1st, 2007. This is actually the oldest centre amongst uh, between the two centres that right. we have right now. And how did it how did it start? How did you start the Honestly, it, I started as a volunteer uh -huh. um, after I came back from America. I, I started as a volunteer working at a daycare centre, which is right behind you mm -hmm. on Dalai Jalaut, um, at a government daycare centre that was run by volunteers. And I went in to volunteer to teach English um, and then saw a need to do better protect. I'm trying to find the right words. Do do better protection work for the children um, because I found that there were gaps. And the reason I only know this is because I had worked um, with similar children in similar backgrounds in America, mm -hmm. in New York actually, um, around the five boroughs. So I knew there were certain things that were missing. Right. And and they were very basic. Um, and but what kind of things? What kind food, of gaps? Shelter. Um, education, health okay. services, many of the children uh, that we came across um, had no birth certificates um, and so when you don't have a birth cert or you, you're considered non-Malaysian you don't have access to free health services mm. and free education and then of course the families here are, are poor, mm. um, it's urban poverty that you find in Chalkit in many pockets um, of this area mm. and, um, and so they, they couldn't afford to send their children uh, to school or t couldn't afford to even get their birth certificate because there was this policy at that time of, of you know, finding a parent 50 ringgit for every time they didn't, they, they were late in doing the birth registration. So, you know, I had one mother who had six kids and, you know, it was ridiculous. She had something like 3,000 ringgit. Um, so the parents so get fined for yeah, not registering yeah, the kids. Yeah, yeah, that was before, but there's a waiver now. So it's much better in that sense. And, and then, then you, you decided to do something about it? And I decided to help the volunteers who were working there mm -hmm. um, to set up something and I planned to go back to New York. I just never went back and I stayed. So, so yeah. what does this centre aim to provide? I know you provide food, so snacks, and then there's also food. therapy and um, yeah. activities. Yeah, so basically we started out with the four basic needs, which was food, health, education and um, uh, shelter services mm -hmm. for children so that they didn't have to stay on the seats. But that was... Um, that was the first three years. It was really like commando style guerrilla warfare, <laughs> literally picking children out and bringing them here. Um, but now we have a, a, a CEO, um, an auntie who runs this place. I just founded it. So, Tini, when you say the children, yes. who, who are the children? Um, specifically, who are the children at Yayas and Chalkit that you're helping? 60% um, of our children registered here are Malaysian children. Okay. And 40% of our children are stateless. Uh, refugees, mostly Rohingyas, um, migrant children, um, so everybody who's not Malaysian. So we have 40% right. of those children, so we have homeschooling programs okay. and stuff for them. And then we have 60% of our kids are Malaysian so, kids so living in the area. Living in the Chalkit area and, and they don't have support at home? Mm -hmm. you know. Or they need extra services, a, a space to go to after school or when their parents work, right. or if there's an issue. Um, we also have a safe house um, far away oh. from here. And that's for children in high risk situations mm. who have gone through court, or welfare sends them, or you know the UN ag agency sends them, or you know also that, those cases. But those children are under 12 years old. So you mentioned that you, you know, in the US when you were living there, you were working with underprivileged kids in mm -hmm. the inner city mm -hmm. area, and yeah. then now you're back here also yeah. working with yeah. at-risk children. Yeah. Ha had you always known you wanted yeah. to work with? Because you're trained <laughs> as an educator, right? I, I am trained as a teacher. Yes. Yes, I'm a teacher and I tell everybody I love children. I actually do, most of the time. <laughs> um, 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 so yes, yeah, so I've always been around children. Mm -hmm. 
and I like children and I tend to get along better with them than I do with adults. I say this all the time, but it's absolutely true. Um, so, so I have, a, I have a, an affinity or a, some call it childish affinity towards children because we speak the same language sort of, um, but others say I'm like a mom and I am, I guess, you know, I'm more like a nene at this point in time, <laughs> uh, but I like chick kids and I, I, I just believe there's certain rights that they must have and that we must, we have a duty and an obligation to protect all So d did you feel like there were children in Malaysia that were just not getting the attention that they needed, especially the, the marginalised? I didn't know until I came to childcare that there were children who... Specifically childcare? Yeah, I didn't know. And that first day I realised that that there were children in need and that a lot of the needs stemmed from the fact that they didn't weren't recognized as Malaysian children or d weren't Malaysian children and so they didn't have access. I didn't know that. I had always stayed away working in America and planned to go work for you know one of the UN agencies um, because I, I knew there was a need there. I didn't know there was a need here so wow. I didn't plan to come back and stay. Right. Um, and then I saw what was going on and I thought you know, if I'm advocating for rights of all children, then I better start at home. All right. And so I decided to stay. So that's. And the focus uh, went from at risk, you know, um, urban poor kids to stateless kids, undocumented. So, so, so issues. talk to me about. Um, your work with at-risk kids, specifically stateless, uh, stateless children? Well, the, the issue came up obviously from, from working in this area and as you get more entrenched here in childcare, you realise that there are issues and the issues are national issues. They're not issues that are just specific to childcare. Um, the issue of pregnant girls who give up their babies, who abandon their babies, what happens to foundlings with no documents. Um, children who are raped, beaten, murdered um, because they have no papers or their parents are not Malaysian. Um, issues with being stateless, what exactly that, did that mean? And I wasn't talking about from a legal perspective and a law. We know what the law says. We know what the federal constitution says, which is, which is completely different from what's being carried out. So that's a whole different issue. But the impact on children right. when they're not in school. Right when they're abandoned. And, you, and you've seen this, right? Mm -hmm. at, at over and over again. I just got a call this morning. I was just putting it on Facebook. I rant on Facebook. So I, <laughs> anyway, I had, I had a call this morning from a home um, um, about a three-year-old girl who was abandoned. She's a foundling, left, um, obviously, by parents in this home with no papers, no documents. Mm. She's three. And the burden of proof under the law to prove that she's a citizen is on the child, not on the not on, on the three-year-old. On the three-year-old, three she's supposed to go prove she's she's Malaysian, and she has no guardian because no one adopted her. She has no papers, and she's three. Yeah, I have a similar case with a girl who was abandoned at six. She's now 24 with no papers, stateless, and she went to uh, national registration department, and they said you need a visa to come in and work and stay in this country. But and she's she was born, born here. here. You, you're a mother so, of two stateless children yourself at, at yeah. one point, so Zara yeah. and Kairi. Zayed. Z Zayed. Zayed is Malaysian, okay. but we found his mother six months after she was, he was left here. Okay. So he was, he was at risk of statelessness, but he's not. He's, he's not, Malaysian. okay, all right. So Zara is stateless. So, so has that kind of lit your fire to continue this fight? That, actually, that has lit my fire because she's already 11. It's been 11 years. Still um, fighting for papers? Yeah, still fighting. Well, she's got a birth cert, but she doesn't have her citizenship. Yeah, her case is, brings home the point about, about the effects and impact and ramifications of not having an identity because she's my child. I know what it's like. She had a asthma attack. No, she, had, uh, she fell down last week and she fractured her wrist. Right. And I'm frantic at the emergency room already and I couldn't fill out her registration form. Because she doesn't have Because she doesn't details. have insurance. Oh. I didn't have details. I didn't know where she was born. I only could only give the birth set and I couldn't speak because I was gonna cry. Mm. I was panicked, my daughter's in pain and the, the nurse and the person at the registrar's office was so kind because he could see and he said, don't worry, just give me her name, show me her birth set, we'll fill in the rest. 
And it was as simple as that. We couldn't even fill out the registration form. I couldn't fill out the registration So, And that, was not, that part was already bad enough for me, but mm. my daughter was standing next to me, and so I had to tell her to move, because I didn't want to hear all this. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so does she know that she doesn't She doesn't have understand what it what means. It means. For her, she doesn't have a passport. She can't figure out why she's not like her brother. So, so help me understand statelessness because I think the issue is a lot more complex than most people understand it. Yeah. And you know, there are so many worries right now that statelessness, uh, you know, children, undocumented children, is just another worry, and it feels very far away. So, help me understand all the complexities that that this issue. Well, has. first of all, childhood statelessness is for children under the age of eight, 18 with no proper documents or who have not been recognized as being a citizen of any country okay. and not this country. Let's, we'll talk about childhood statelessness in Malaysia. There are, we've counted, 10 categories of statelessness. 10 categories ten, ten of statelessness. Different types of statelessness. And this is just Malaysian? This is Malaysia. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to talk about some of them because they're sensitive. So, so <laughs> I'm going to. Sabah <laughs> children are stateless because they're not recognized as citizens of, of Filipino descent, and, 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 are not recognized as Filipinos, and they're not recognized as Malaysians. They're stateless. Foundlings, children abandoned, all those pregnant girls who are leaving their babies. So, so babies that are found are called foundlings yes, with no foundlings papers? foundlings are stateless. Okay because there's no documents to prove so, where they So are. all these cases of baby dumping that it's we... It's the worst thing possible. It's not just about the safety of the child. It's, it's about the identity, identity. of the child mm. and the documentation of who they are. Mm. I've had ridiculous people <laughs> holding families and saying, do they look Malaysian? And I'm just looking at them like, are you stupid? <laughs> you know, it, it's, a, it's a paper. It's a recognition by a country that this child belongs to them. It's not stamped on their face. But we, we make it a stamping on their face when we make them stateless. We are the ones who make them. Policy makers are the ones who make them stateless. The child is not born stateless. Right. We put them on, uh, on that. So families are stateless. Children who are trafficked, baby selling cases, who are left, who are taken because their documents are falsified. Mm -hmm. The 12-year-olds who are now, the parents are getting caught with a national registration diary because they falsified documents at birth oh, wow. with the birth sets. They're having their their ICs pull back wow. and they, they're stateless because they were never Malaysians in the first place and they falsified documents. They're stateless. Orang Asis who, who have never registered their children for generations and recent, they're at risk of statelessness. People, parents here who never registered their children because they couldn't afford that ridiculous fine mm -hmm. and, and who never asked for the waiver, didn't know their rights, their children are at risk of statelessness. Actually, they're already stateless because they're third and fourth generation. Oh, wow. You have, I mean, Rohingya refugee refugees. children mm -hmm. are refugees and stateless because they're not recognized as any, as not being part, as uh, um, not belonging to Myanmar and they're not So Malaysian. absolutely that no. That keeps going on the tent. No yeah. man's land, really. Yeah. <laughs> Why is it that the state won't recognize them? I mean, because they're afraid. There's this, there's this real myth, because it's never been proven, because it's a myth, that if you open the floodgates, that parents are going to be hiding behind trees, waiting to dump their children here, and these poor, innocent Malaysian parents are going to pick these children up, get them their citizenship, and then the real parents jump out and say, we're with the child, which is ridiculous, number one. Number two, you know, we have we are signatories to the Convention of the Rights of the Child. Mm -hmm. We signed mm. that we would protect children. Yes, we have a reservation on right to identity, mm. and we have a reservation on access to education. But we have a duty. We have a duty to protect children. And even if you have reservations on the UNCRC, we're signatories. You give other articles to prove that you need to protect the child. And you have the Child Act. The spirit of the child access, protect all children in Malaysia, it didn't, doesn't say protect Malaysian children. That's the spirit of the child act yeah. though. But it never says in the child act only Malaysian children. Right. It says children. So I don't understand this need to have to differentiate between Malaysian children or migrant children or refugee children. Or children are children. Right. You know, when you come, the reason why we wanted to set this place up in Chowkit was because I didn't want people asking for ICs on my kids before you can eat. Oh. Children have to eat. Right. You know, children need to sleep. You don't need a my kid to say, okay, now you can go in. I mean, come on. Right. Come on.
What? Where are the roadblocks, Tini? I mean, you, this is, you, you talked about this myth, right? So it's yeah. a myth. It's perhaps a myth the, that's perpetuated. The, perhaps the law doesn't, well, I mean, the spirit but of the law wants, you, wants us to take care of all, all children. The but federal constitution says that any child who doesn't know who the parents, who has no documents, who have been adopted, by, well, any child in Malaysia who doesn't know who their, who their parents are or who are born in this country should be entitled to Malaysian citizenship. That's, that's in the, the constitution. constitution. Yeah, but policy-wise, that's not what's practiced because at the same time that we have this in the federal constitution, we also have in the federal constitution um, uh, the article that says that the Home Minister is the only person who has discretionary power to give citizenship. So the Home Minister is the only person in Malaysia who can say you now, as a stateless child, are is a citizen yeah. of Malaysia. Yeah. One man has One that man. power. One man. One man. So, and I wish he would sit down with us and understand the issue. I wish he would sit down with us and, and, and understand that it's not about stateless people, communities from one, one particular race. It's not belonging to the Indian community. It's not belonging to Sabah. It's not belonging to, you know, Orang Asli. It affects children across all the divide, across all race, across all culture. There are Chinese children, Malay children, Indian children, you know, every single child you can think of who are affected by statelessness. Do you think that it's been broken down into this racial lens? It's been broken down and gone to political lens. Political lens? It has, it has what been politicized as in foreigners are coming in to take over the country. Oh my God, blah, 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 blah. They're not foreigners. The, most of these children didn't crawl in here and like were left there. Yeah? Most of these children came in because they were abandoned for whatever reason. Their parents couldn't take care of them for whatever reason, who were sold, were bought, or their parents and their parents and their grandparents and grandparents oh. and grandparents are stateless, or parents, Malaysian, have bore having living abroad, giving birth to a child mm -hmm. overseas, uh -huh. didn't register their child at the US Embassy or the National Registration Department. The are also considered also, stateless? The child is also considered stateless. The child is also stateless because the parents never registered the child at the embassy or at National There Registration is just so many uh, facets is, to this. You cannot, a mother cannot pass down her nationality to her child. Oh. That's what happens in Malaysia. Adoptive parents who've adopted stateless children cannot pass down their citizenship to their child. Citizenship in this country is a privilege. It's not a right. And it doesn't pass down from one from mother to child. Do you think that's fair? That's wrong. Citizenship not being a right? I think, in my case, which my daughter's a foundling, she was a victim of baby selling, and I'm Malaysian adopting um, adopting a stateless child, so she fits three of those ten categories, yeah. It's not enti I'm not entitled to give her a citizenship. She's not entitled to a citizenship. Huh? Mm -hmm. That makes no sense. So, m part of your job, as you said, you know, talk, you're looking at policy, right, at a policy mm -hmm. level, yeah. trying to make a change at the policy level because yeah. that's where you see the roadblocks happening. Yeah. Um, there are people looking at the, the legal side. I'm sure you're looking at funding, trying to keep everything afloat. Just before um, we had this conversation, you showed me photos of a baby, baby girl yeah. that you helped. Yeah, she she, she at, 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 at birth, when yeah. she was a baby, she had leukemia, yeah. and now a year later, she's thriving, and that was, yeah. that's well, but so, so my friends good work I, that you yeah, and no, your friends have done. Money. So, so that's a lot of funding as well that you're, you're looking that was to a lot source. Of money. Yeah. So how, how are you pulling together? This must be... I'm you're only one talking. woman trying to pull everything together. I, I think I am bipolar. <laughs> I definitely have split personalities. Um, so I, 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 the, the, I am really, really blessed. And I, I tell people this, that I think my gift or my, my responsibility from God um, is that I have friends who know friends who know friends. And I have this amazing network of friends and really supportive friends and family. And so they will tell me where to go and stop. So last week I was talking to an Islamic financier mm. who happens to also be on the advisory um, Zakat Council, who happens to know this person and that person. And I'm now, so she put me in touch with you know, one of the crowdfunding Islamic things. Oh, that's um, good. You know, talking to people in banks and stuff to try to raise money, to try to figure out a crowdfunding uh, model or funding models to be but able to that, set up. Business. But you know, with all these different areas, mm. 
you must at, on some days wake up feeling frustrated. Oh, but that was also today. Oh. So I have the I have the beautiful <laughs> picture of the, the the little girl who's the one who's who, who's fine now, and then right before that I had the three year old, mm. and so this is my life. It gets so absolutely intense where it's really happy and you're really sad and that's how it is you know and I keep telling myself it's just life and you just need to take one child at a time one child at a time have you time. had wins in in your your work yep. have you had you know a significant win that you feel okay this is enough to keep this me going girl, the little one so it's wins. it's little wins it like it's that. little wins but we, which is a big difference nobody else wanted to take her case nobody else wanted to fundraise you know um so, and she made it, and you know, and you know, and I was just praying, Lord, this time last year, I was just praying that she'd make it to her first birthday, because her birthday is on May 13, which is like 12 days before mine, and I just wanted to make sure she got to her first birthday, and I got her a cake, and she's now going to turn two, so I'm just happy. Um, so there are wins. Um, there are wins, good wins, um, but then, and there are bad days, too. What happens on the bad days? Children die. What happens to you on the bad days? Mm. How do you keep I, going? I think you take that moment to grieve and mourn or, or rant, and then, and then you pick yourself up. I actually go through quotes, so mm -hmm. I find like motivational quotes. And then, then you pick yourself up and you dust yourself off and you say tomorrow's another day. And you just try and you try um, not to lose children again. You try not to lose children physically, you try not to lose children to a bad system, you try not to lose children to horrible policies, you try not to lose children to injustice. Um, you just try. If you could change one thing, just one thing, I know the system is, is multiple layers and complex, but if you could get one win, what would it be? That all children get citizenship to this country. We can fix everything else, but if they have no identity, they can't move. Okay, so it's about citizenship. All right, well, Tini, thank you so much for speaking. Thank you for today. having yeah. me, Melissa. Good luck me all the work. Work. Well, you oh, know, it's, you. you need the passion to do this work, to keep, no, it, to keep you. you going, right? Thank you. Tini, if, if people watching today, they want to help, like myself, they, yeah. they, they hear your story, they're moved by it, how can we help? What can we do? Well, you know, someone was saying, you know, if someone wants to give 10 ringgit, what does it mean? I'm like, 10 ringgit is a meal for a child. Um, if you go to our website, which is www.yck.org.my, okay. you can see how to donate there. Um, you can volunteer. Um, you can help us with expertise. You can help volunteer to do different things. What do you need the most? Do you need funding? Do you need funding? Funding yeah. is what you need. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we've got, we've got Poisson coming out with Ramadan. So, you know, if... A family or someone wants to wants to sponsor a night for the children to make buka puasa here. That would be amazing. So we're okay, still looking. Okay. Yeah, for that would be wonderful. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Well, Thank you. Again. All the best. Thank you. Thank you.